Hi, Happy New Year and welcome to Pet Pals. I'm Linda Shea with the Division of Animal Control. With me is Randy Cooper. And every week on Pet Pals, we showcase animals from our Pet Adoption Center that are looking for forever homes. So if you see an animal this, this morning that you're interested in adopting or you might know of somebody who's looking for a pet, we certainly hope you will direct them to the shelter. First little puppy or big puppy that we're gonna take a look at is Jesse. Jesse is a lab German Shepherd mix. He's only about a year old, so he's relatively young, and I refer to anything a year and under as really a puppy. They're still um, learning the rules. They're st still trainable. They're still, um, still very young as far as being you know, uh, you comfortable with, with um, what their world is looking like. But Jesse is only about a year old again. He was turned in by an owner, and they had him for almost his whole life. Uh, they got him as a puppy off of Craigslist from the beginning. And the reason they turned him into the shelter, they got, he got too big for them, too much to handle. And a lot of times when you are committing to a puppy, you want to make sure that you understand what that entails. That entails primarily consistency. Jesse would uh, thrive extremely well in a consistent environment where he knows what's going on. You can tell by his body language he's a little bit shy, a little bit concerned about what's going on. So if you were able to offer a home, offer him a home where it, things are consistent, where things are um, follow one another you know, in an expected manner, that would certainly work wonders for his confidence. The other thing you would want to do with Jesse is just consistently reward him with positive reinforcement. Um, he responds to uh, gentle touches and verbal cues and also uh, is somewhat food motivated but a little suspicious at first. So he is definitely worthwhile. He's definitely a dog though that would um, be considered sort of a project long term. but definitely with consistent treatment, with kind treatment, positive reinforcement. He's just a wonderful, wonderful little dog right now. So this is Jesse, again, about a year old. Um, he's current on vaccines. He's already been neutered, microchipped, um, snap tested negative for heartworm, Lyme, Ehrlichia, and anaplasma. So he's got a good head start. We are hoping to find him a forever home. This adorable little girl, we named her Sprout. Believe it or not, she came to the shelter as a stray. Um, on December 23rd. She's somewhere between six and eight years old. And again, we have to estimate so much about stray animals that come to us. So we look at their teeth, we look at their body condition, their eyes, just to kind of gauge what, an, what age they are. Sprout is a Shih Tzu Poodle mix. Um, she does have the classic underbite of a Shih Tzu. She's got the poodly fur, and she's got, as you can see, the great disposition for being a lap dog. She's only about 12.5 pounds. We have brought her up to speed on vaccines, dewormer, flea and tick prevention. Um, we also uh, noted here she did have a, a, a checkup by one of our visiting vets. And so she does have some dental disease. And given her age, six to eight years old, that's not unusual. A lot of times dogs, you know, by the time, depending on genetics and depending on breed, by the time they're four or five, at least um, will need some sort of dental intervention by, by your veterinarian. So the best thing to do um, as preventative measure is get your dog to the vet at least once a year. Uh, if you notice something going on, you wanna make sure that that's more than once a year, but at least once a year, and they will do a nose to tail exam. And a lot of times you'll notice as your dog gets older that dental disease kind of creeps in and some maintenance is needed there. She is a very sweet dog. She does have a pre-existing injury, just a tiny, tiny little cut on her right hip. It looks like somebody tried to groom her at home with scissors and kind of nipped at her. There's nothing to do for that. We're just kind of monitoring it. Um, it certainly does not put her off at all from movement or from being a lap dog um, and enjoying interaction with people. So this is Sprout. Again, she's about six to eight years old, a Shih Tzu Poodle mix. This handsome little boy is Lucky. Lucky is about eight years old, and he was actually adopted from the shelter quite a number of years ago. Uh, his family had some changes in it, so he's ended up with us. Lucky is a Beagle Cocker Spaniel mix, so you get the intelligence of a Cocker Spaniel, you get the great temperament of a Beagle, and I would say he definitely does exhibit a Beagle temperament as far as being reliable, easy to handle, very friendly, and you can see that tail is just, um, just exhibiting happy. 
Um, definitely food motivated, another beagle trait. And according to his family, he does know how to sit, he knows how to beg, he knows how to roll over. So they've worked with him. So unfortunately, and not his fault, the family situation has changed. <laughs> so, um, so he's with us now. Uh, Lucky is about 40 pounds. He's a little overweight. He could take maybe five pounds off and, and be a little more comfortable. We've brought him up to speed on vaccines. Um, he is already neutered. He's microchipped. He does exhibit some uh, dental disease. Again, a lot of times with older dogs, especially once they hit three, four, five years old, you want to talk to your vet about uh, if they need a dental and, and or how to prevent dental disease. A lot of that can be diet or chewies, but some dogs do not chew the same way that others do. So uh, again, best bet, just talk to your veterinarian. Um, he does, um, again, he's been around children. He's been around um, infants and up. He's been around uh, most other pets, and I'm guessing that means dogs and cats. And again, the owners did work with him as far as manners. He walks nicely on a leash. He's friendly with other dogs. So if you're looking for an older dog, and eight years old really is not old for this type of, of breed mix, um, I would bring, you know, if you have an existing dog, we recommend bringing them in for a meet and greet, just a little nose to nose time to see uh, if they would get along or not. And again, Lucky is great temperament. And for me, that's really what sells an animal. If they've got an awesome temperament and some manners, that's gold. So again, this is Lucky looking for a forever home. So this is Turnip. And the reason we have Turnip instead of another dog, we only have the three dogs that we just showed you without adoption applications, which is a good thing. So instead of two more dogs, we're going to show you a bunny and a guinea pig. So Turnip is here with us. His breed is a mini Rex. His coloring is a Himalayan, similar to um, when you think about a Hemi uh, cat coloring. He's got the white fur with the kind of the seal points on the nose and his ears. He's about 10 months old, and he was turned in with a few other bunnies. Um, he came from someone who was breeding rabbits and was unable to sell them when they hit about six or seven months, so brought them to the shelter. Prior to leaving the shelter, just like our dogs and cats, our bunnies are spayed or neutered, which is a good thing because there are way too many bunnies um, that are just out there that are without homes. And Turnip is a good example of one of those. But he's a good temperament. He's relatively young. Uh, he's living by himself at the moment, primarily because he's intact and um, we just kind of need to assess his temperament. If you have an existing bunny, we actually will offer um, we have a volunteer that's very fluent in bunnies that will come in and, and kind of help you find a friend if you're looking for a friend for your bunny. Um, and we would do what we call bunny matches here, so, sort of like a meet and greet for dogs, but again, under close supervision. And they don't actually, um, we don't actually put them nose to nose, we put caging in between. But it's a good system and it works out. Um, but Turnip is available for adoption. The adoption fee for bunnies, whether they're boys or cats, or boys or girls, excuse me, uh, is $50. And that, again, does cover getting them spayed and neuters, which is very important. Bunnies will require a special diet. You want to make sure that you um, introduce bunny pellets of a good quality, as well as um, greens, as well as vegetables. And we do have lists available if you're not fluent in that to kind of educate you on types of nutrition that bunnies need. You need to make sure you watch for their teeth, make sure again that they get a vet visit at least once a year and their toenails do need to be trimmed. But this is Turnip again looking for a forever home. This little guy is Ziggy. He is a guinea pig. He has been with us since early October, so a couple of months now. Um, he is very active, very friendly, very social. He's only about two years old, and the reason he was turned in, there's a couple of reasons. Um, one, the folks just didn't want him anymore, and then secondly, um, someone in the family had developed allergies, and something that we hear pretty often, especially with small animals, uh, guinea pigs especially, is that folks develop allergies, and, and what you need to realize is that Sometimes you may not be allergic to the guinea pig, but you might be allergic to the Timothy hay, the peripherals that, that go along with small animals. So it would be a good idea to consult with an allergist if you do really think you have allergies, um, just to kind of diagnose and, and figure out if there's a way to, you know, if you're interested in keeping your pet. Another way to kind of resolve some allergies is just um, don't allow the pet to be in, in 
uh, the area that you sleep. And certainly, what's advisable with any animal, regardless of your allergy status or, or uh, what have you, is to wash your hands before and after you handle pets, especially if, um, if you're going to have a meal, because they do carry germs and some germs are transmissible to people. So you just want to make sure, especially for kids, that you get them in the habit of washing their hands. But Ziggy, again, he's about two years old. He started out um, as a purchase from a pet store. He's a little boy. He's with us now. And, and guinea pigs are, are not necessarily a difficult pet. They do require um, socialization. They need to be handled so that they're used to it and they do require a special diet in addition to a good quality guinea pig pellet. You want to offer them dark greens like spinach, um, things to chew on and again their toenails need to be trimmed and need to make sure that they're eating things that wear down their teeth and a visit to a vet at least once a year is always a good idea. So again this is Ziggy, again one of our guinea pigs that is looking for a home. We are going to take a short break and we'll be right back with five cats that are uh, looking for homes from the Frederick County Division of Animal Control. Many volunteer opportunities are available on Frederick County Boards and Commissions. Whether the Commission on Aging, Human Relations Commission, the Solid Waste Advisory Committee, Workforce Development Board, or many others, the Board of County Commissioners welcomes your participation. Those desiring to serve must be residents and registered voters of Frederick County. For more information, contact Joyce Grisnickel at 301-600-1102 or by email at fcgboards at frederickcountymd.gov. The Frederick County Sheriff's Office now offers fingerprinting services three days per week, from Tuesday through Thursday. The hours are from 12 noon to 5 p.m. Our goal is to make it more convenient for citizens to have fingerprints taken for employment, licenses, permits, and other important issues like adoption and child care services. The Sheriff's Office will continue to accept credit and debit cards, checks, and money orders as payment for fingerprint fees. Cash is not accepted. For more information, contact the Fingerprint Information Line at 301 Six zero zero four zero five eight. For weather updates, citizens are encouraged to listen to local radio or TV. Call the Frederick County Government Public Information Line at 301-600-3000 or tune in to Frederick County Government TV Cable Channel 19. Notices are also posted on the Frederick County Government website at www.frederickcountymd.gov and our social media pages. The Frederick County Department of Housing can help retired homeowners 55 or older with limited income receive assistance with home improvements. Zero percent interest, 30-year payment-free mortgages pay for such eligible improvements as widening of doorways, exterior ramps, accessible showers, or even additions like first floor bathrooms and laundry areas in some cases. This is not a reverse equity mortgage and all closing costs are included in the loan. The Housing Department will assist you with completing the simple application, choosing a contractor, and making sure the improvements are completed safely and efficiently. For more information, contact Susan Brown Housing Rehab Programs at 301-600-3531 or by email at sbrown at frederickcountymd.gov or visit our website at www.frederickcountymd.gov slash housing rehab. Welcome back to Pet Pals. Now we're going to take a look at five cats that are looking for forever homes at the Frederick County Division of Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. First cat we're going to take a look at is Nala. Nala is one of my personal favorites. She is about three years old, a gorgeous domestic, short hair, cream tabby. Um, she's got a faint tabby marking, so she almost looks like a solid cream color. She's, and she's very petite, she's only about seven pounds. Nala came in, was turned in with three other cats. 
Uh, every year the shelter takes in, last year we took in almost 5,000 animals, and of those 5,000, about two-thirds were cats and kittens, so we always take in twice as many cats and kittens as other, other animals, uh, primarily because they often arrive in more than one. It's very, um, it's more common for folks to bring us one, two, three, four cats at a time or kittens than just one. So that's Nala's situation. The reason that she was turned into us is the person that had these cats was unable to afford them. So when you're thinking about adopting an animal from a shelter, a rescue, any organization um, in any capacity, you really do want to give a lot of thought to long term. Cats live an average of 15 years. Nala is only three. Again, you also want to take on only what you can do financially. You have to feed pets, you have to provide litter for cats, you need to make sure they get to the vet at least once a year for diagnostics, for routine vaccines, deworming, um, and everything to keep them healthy and happy. So you want to give that some consideration. We do have, as part of our adoption checklist, um, a breakdown of, of what a cat or kitten might cost per year. Um, so we have that available based on, on an animal's age. But again, this is Nala. She is very sweet, easygoing, easy to handle. Um, and she's very relaxed on the adoption floor and that speaks highly for, for a lot of cats. There's usually a lot of traffic, enthusiastic youngsters that run around the adoption floor and Nala puts all, up with all of that very well. So again, this is Nala looking for a home. JJ is another very handsome cat looking for a forever home who's currently on our adoption floor. Um, JJ's intake number is 15-1903. The reason I bring that to your attention is that since July 1st, we've taken in, at the point we took him in in, in October, 1,903 animals. So that's what the numbers designate. Um, it's the fiscal year and then the number of animals. So. Um, he was close to the 1900 mark and that was back in October. But JJ is about two years old. He arrived with two siblings. Um, so again, it's another situation where very typical of people that are relinquishing cats, they do bring us more than one at a time. JJ is already neutered. One thing that we do for all of our cats prior to adoption is we test them for two viruses, uh, which cats can transmit cat to cat feline leukemia and feline immunodeficiency virus, and he's tested negative for both of those. Um, we've brought him up to speed on vaccines, deworming, flea and tick prevention. He is about 10 and a half pounds, so he's on the larger side of, um, as compared to some of our more petite kit cats. Uh, we do have him color-coded green. We color code our, our dogs, cats, and bunnies for temperament and personality. He's green, he's a little bit shy, a little bit reticent, but as you can see, very agreeable to being held, to being handled, to being pet, so very social. And the good thing about JJ, he did live with other cats, so from that um, perspective, he's, he's used to other cats and other animals. And again, he was turned in because the person was moving and unable to take him along. Um, they had mentioned that he's afraid of loud noises, not unusual sometimes for cats not to be fans of vacuums and, and other things that, that make noise, so just to keep that as a consideration. But again, overall, very social, very friendly, and has gorgeous green eyes to go with that. So this is JJ looking for a home. William came to us as a stray, so again with strays we make the best guesstimates as far as age and, and other things. We have William somewhere between a year, a year and a half old. He came to us from Market Street in Frederick City, so not too far away from the shelter. Um, he is very affectionate, very sweet, and he is color-coded blue. So oftentimes people will come in looking for a pet to adopt and they're not sure where to start, um, and certainly any of our volunteers or staff can help you decide that. But one of the deciding factors can be temperament and personality. Our blue cats are the ones that are more likely to be lap cats, extremely uh, easy going, easy to handle, very social, friendly, um, and you can see he's kind of <laughs> very inquisitive as well, kind of um, just, just settling in and, and very comfortable doing so. So that's, uh, as far as his temperament and personality, he is, that is why he is uh, color-coded blue. Uh, as with all of our cats, he is up to date on vaccines. Um, we tested him for leukemia and FIV, both negative. He is about nine pounds. Um, he is still intact, but that will change prior to leaving our shelter. The adoption fee for adult cats is 
9750, and that covers getting them spayed, neutered, vaccinated, dewormed, um, snap tested, and of course uh, microchipped. And we will register that microchip prior to leaving the shelter. Any animal that leaves our shelter, either adopted, returned to owner, is microchipped, and we do process the second step of that, which is to um, register the chip. The chip alone doesn't do any good unless that information is registered. So if an animal comes to a shelter, vet's office, and a chip is found, that information can be uh, tracked back to an owner. So again, this is William, came to us as a stray, but certainly making himself at home here, but in very deserving of, of a home for um, other than the shelter forever. So this is, again, William about a year, year and a half old kitty cat. This is Eddie. Eddie was turned in by an owner uh, just a couple of days ago, so he is very new to the shelter. He just came in on December 29th. He's about a year old, and he's a big guy. He's a little over nine pounds. Um, we've brought him up to speed on vaccines and testing and all the rest. Um, he did have a mild ear infection, or does have, so we're treating him for that. Uh, not all animals that arrive at, at the animal shelter come in in ideal medical condition. So if they have um, any medical needs, we do have a part-time veterinarian that can do uh, diagnostics. We also have very generous visiting vets that come uh, at least twice a week to kind of look at our animals, perform exams, and uh, get them on med any medication. So right now he's got, again, a mild ear infection. We're just treating that on a daily basis. And, and if quite a few days he'll he'll be fine with that. Um, sometimes cats develop ear infections as a result of having either ear mites or, or something that's gotten in and like small children if they keep scratching at it it can um, exacerbate the, the situation but Eddie is um, overall very friendly social a little bit shy so he is color-coded green um, and we do have a lot of times when animals are moved to the adoption floor we do instill sort of a no visits uh, rule just for the first day or two. And that's not to discourage people from visiting. It really is just to protect the animal and to give them a chance to acclimate because our adoption floors, especially on the weekends and evening hours, when we're open on Wednesday and Thursday late, um, can be a little overwhelming. So that's why we do that. Of course, if you're visiting the shelter and you see that type of notation, you do want to ask for more information at the front desk. Um, Eddie was turned in with one other cat, which we'll meet in a little bit, Gus. Um, but the owner developed respiratory allergy to the cats and was not able to keep them. So that's how the cats ended up here. So another, just another conversation similar to guinea pigs. Um, if you do develop an allergy that you suspect is from your pet, and if it does cause respiratory distress, you want to consult an allergist, your primary uh, care physician, just to, to get the human aspect of, of diagnostics underway so you can rule out you know, if it is actually the animal and certainly if you need treatment of any sort. Um, but this is Eddie looking for a home uh, from the animal shelter. The last kitty cat we're going to take a look at is Gus. Um, Gus is Gus came in with Eddie, the cat that we just took a look at, and Gus, I'm not sure if they were litter mates, but they are from the same place, and they're both about a year old. Gus is a little over nine pounds. Again, we've um, provided him with all the medical needs he, ha he needs, and he also has a mild ear infection, so I'm going to guess that that's either just from dirty ears and scratching, we're just providing a mild antibiotic for the next few days to help that clear up um, in addition to just monitoring his habits. But he is a very clean cat, very friendly, very social, a little bit shy in the cage as far as trying to get him out. Um, so we do have him color-coded green. But as you can see, he's acclimated pretty well to just sitting near uh, Randy just and just kind of hanging out. Um, he is developing those jowls, typical of intact males. But again, prior to leaving here, all of our cats, dogs, and uh, bunnies are spayed or neutered prior to leaving. So Gus will be neutered before he leaves, and we will go ahead and microchip him as we do our other adopted animals and return to owners, um, just to make sure that if in the uh, case he gets away from his new owner, we can easily track back to where he belongs if he ends up either here at a vet's office. Um, again, Gus was turned in with Eddie, and the reason being the owner had developed respiratory allergies and, and could not keep um, 
had both of these cats for at least 10 months or so. And uh, Gus, in addition to Eddie, they've been around um, babies, toddlers, 20 months old, eight-year-old children. They also lived with a 14-year-old dog. And um, I guess the, the animals are, uh, they're again, a little bit shy. The owner says that they're afraid of, um, says they're afraid of water bottles. I'm not sure what that means if, they're, if that was a training technique because we do offer that uh, suggestion if you want cats to stay off your counters, off your furniture, or not scratch things to, um, to utilize a water bottle to do so. Just a little bit of a spray usually gets the point across. But again, this is Gus. He is looking for a home, a very sweet, um, very good looking one-year-old kitty. And that wraps it up for this week's Pet Pals. We appreciate, as always, you watching the show. Um, these are just a small amount of animals that are looking for homes. We have many more on our adoption floor, so we encourage you to visit our shelter, 1832 Rosemont Avenue. And until next time, we will uh, see you next time on Pet Pals. The Frederick County Health Department's On The Mark Adolescent Clubhouse and Sober Activity Center is a safe, community-based clubhouse which provides a starting point or continuing care link for peers supporting one another through the process of recovery. Membership is free and open to youth from ages 12 to 17 who are in treatment for substance abuse or are struggling in this area or who have completed a related program. The clubhouse offers fun and sober games homework help, skills building, and many other activities. Located in the health department at 350 Montevue Lane in Frederick, Maryland, the clubhouse is open Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. To learn more, call 301-600-1126 or visit frederickcountymd.gov on the mark. Please also like us on Facebook at On The Mark Clubhouse. Credit and debit cards are now accepted at the Frederick County Community Development Division. Customers can now pay for permits, inspections, and development review fees with their credit or debit card, either online, over the phone, or in person at the office. Please note that a service fee will be charged by the card processor for these transactions. We hope that this new convenience will further strengthen the Frederick Board of County Commissioner's business-friendly strategic goals as part of our Open for Business campaign. For more information, visit frederickcountymd.gov slash community development or call 301-600-2313.